Second Peter and Chapter Three. Second Peter, Chapter Three, page two thousand and eighteen. Going to read from verse one. Second Peter, Chapter Three. <coughs> is now beloved the second letter I'm writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Saviour spoken by your apostles knowing this first of all that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, saying, Where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. But when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth, by his word, are being reserved for fire, kept for the judgment and destruction the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. <coughs> but the day of the Lord will come, like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth <coughs> and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, on account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat, but according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. Regard the patience of our Lord to be salvation. Just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you. I want to think a little bit this morning about this passage and about the last days and just what that means for us all and the way this world is heading. And why? I want to do something, I don't know if it will work, but I hope it does. <coughs> I've not even practiced it. <laughs> so, pray. The scripture here says <clears throat> that 
that in the last days we're going to face mocking. Mocking. When we present the word of God, the world will mock. And it will mock because of the way it thinks. Because of the way it's been programmed to think and believe. Because the world thinks that everything's going to go on as it's always gone on. It's called uniformitarianism or something like that. It's a long word anyway. The world thinks something like this. Long, long ago, far, far away, <laughs> once upon a time, there was nothing. Well, nothing might have been something. In fact, nothing must have been something because something went bang. And off it went. <laughs> what went? Well, we don't, I'm not quite sure, but it went. And it went something like this. It, it kind of started off and it went along and then there was a blob. Or two. Or three. Or maybe more. Anyway, these blobs sprang to life and then they gradually got better and better and off it went until, lo and behold, here we are today. Things are on the up. We're in the right direction. Technology is just going to take us on and on except, unfortunately, Greta and Gan will tell you, we're all doomed! We're doomed! We're, we're destroying poor old Mother Earth, and if we don't pull our socks up, we're doomed! <coughs> but we can pull our socks up. We can pull ourselves together. All the nations can get together. We are the world. We are the people. We are the ones who'll make a brighter day. So let's just start giving. <coughs> and the nations can get together. We just need a good leader. who will lead us on to better and brighter things. We're off. It's all on the up. And it's always been that way. We're just going in the right direction, aren't we? Might have been one or two little hiccups along the way. A few asteroids that destroyed the dinosaurs and things like that. But basically, we're on the up. And everything's rosy. If we can just pull our socks up and get together, we can do it. The world basically thinks something like that, doesn't it? You went through school, that's what you're told, isn't it? Hmm? But Peter says, it's all about what God says. It's all about what God says. Not long, long ago, far, far away. But just in the beginning. In the beginning, what happened? God created the heavens and the earth. And it was brilliant. It was perfect. God looked at all that he had made and he called it all into being just simply by speaking. God spoke. God said, he said, let there be light, let there be land, let there be creatures, let there be man. And it was very good. But then God said something else, didn't he? He said to man, do not eat from the tree. God said that. It was all about what God said. But what happened? Disobedience, rebellion, sin. And where did we go? We went downhill rapidly. The earth was cursed. Everything 
was on down from there. And then God spoke again. God said in the days of Noah, I am going to destroy all flesh. The wickedness of man continually before me. These people, they're still living 900 years old and they're just getting harder and harder and more and more wicked. I'm going to destroy man. Noah, build an ark for the salvation of your household. Get on it. I'm going to wash it all away. It was on a downward spiral. Now, in the days of Noah, it goes down. Now we're not living 900 years. After the flood, we're living 100 not. And it's still going down. We're still on the down. And God said, go into all the world. Replenish the earth. But we've got more sin. More rebellion. The people want to get together. They don't want to go into all the world. They want to get together. We are the world. We are the people. We're the ones. We'll build a tower. A tower. <coughs> and God looked at it and he said, no. When men get together, nothing will be impossible for them. I'll come down. I'll confuse the languages. And I'll scatter them across the earth. We'll divide them into nations. And we'll give them all silly languages. Like Lancashire and stuff like that. And so God confused the languages. What a babble it was. It went down again. And then they were all in languages. And God chose a man called Abraham and promised salvation through his seed. The Lord Jesus Christ. But it was still going down. Still going down. And the earth is wearing out like a filthy garment. We are still going down. We're not going up. We're going down. We're degenerating. We no longer live 900 years. We don't even live 100 and odd. Three score year and ten. Mm -hmm. Except due to strength you might get 80. You keep looking after yourself. Honor your father and mother and God might give you a bit longer. Mm -hmm. But not a lot. And things are still going down. But God says... God says, <coughs> in the last days, is he going to go up or down? No. Nope. God says, in the last days, not just on the slide, dear friends, in the <coughs> last days, there will be a rebellion and a lawlessness and a nations all getting together devising vain things against the Lord and against his anointed and things will go from bad to worse and it will become more and more lawless it'll be like the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah and worse it's going to take a dive it's going to go down big time and God's wrath will be poured out upon the earth for seven years. <clears throat> and most of the population of the earth will be destroyed. They can try. But it won't work. <coughs> we're going down. And we're going down fast in the last days. Going from bad to worse, from worse to worse still. From worse still to disaster. And it all ends in tears, dear friends. Unless you've put your trust in Jesus. 
Because Jesus is coming back. And the world, dear friends, is travailing like a woman who's about to give birth. It's in great pain. The whole of creation is groaning, dear friends. Hurry up, get this rabble off. And bring Jesus back. And when Jesus comes back, it goes back up there. And for a thousand years he will rule the nations in righteousness with a rod of iron. And then at the end of the thousand years, Satan's going to be released. There's going to be one last youth rebellion. Gog and Magog. And the Lord will step in, destroy it all. And then there'll be a big... I believe in a big bang. I don't know if it's going to go with bang. But everything's going to melt up. Heaven and earth will flee away, dear friends. <coughs> And then there's going to be new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And all whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, those who've given themselves to Jesus, wash in his precious blood. God's going to wipe away every tear. A new Jerusalem's going to come down from heaven. We're going to live in that beautiful golden city. No more sin. No more rebellion. It's going to be brilliant, dear friends. Now then, I know my drawing and everything's rubbish. But can you spot the difference? Little bit of a difference, isn't that? This is just, well, there's nothing much we can do about it, but we'll pull through. This is all about what? What God says, dear friends. What God says. It's all about what God says. Heaven and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. Forget man's plans. Forget man's philosophies. Forget man's man has now discovered. Forget it all, dear friends. The only thing that matters is what God says. Do you understand? This is where we should be. God has spoken. God has said. But the world, dear friends, in its delusion is going to mock us. It will mock the idea of Noah's flood. It will mock eight people on a boat. It will mock the idea of the Tower of Babel, even though they've fashioned the, the Brussels buildings on it. It will mock all these things. It will mock the idea of a millennial kingdom, of God keeping his promises to the nation of Israel, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and his descendants. It will mock the whole thing. In the last days, mockers will come. <laughs> Bible. <laughs> the Bible. And we need to be firm, dear friends, that it's all about what God has said. It's all about what God has said. And Peter says, I want to stir you up. I want to stir you up. And I want to try and stir you up this morning, dear friends, because we're going to be mocked. Because I used to think something like that. I don't know about you. And we're living in a people, and especially a young generation that's been programmed just like that. And God has given us his word to take to them and say, Thus saith the Lord, 
This is what God has said. God created the heavens and the earth by His Word. God flooded the world by His Word. God is in full control. God has said what will happen and it will come to pass. And the only thing that we can trust in is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. But we'll be mocked for it. And I hope you see why. You get the general... I know it's just lines and things, but you get the picture. Our view is very different to the world's view. Very different. Our authority is very different to the world's. We believe that God has spoken. And that's our authority. What God has said. Let's turn, please, to Matthew 24, and let's look. Just read a few verses. Where are we on this thing? We're here, dear friends. We're just about here. And things are about to go downhill very quickly. Like a woman in childbirth. We know it's coming. We get a little bit of a warning, but it can come very, very quickly. And when it comes, apparently it's painful. Apparently. That's what they're saying. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 1, Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he answers and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here shall be left upon another which will not be torn down. <coughs> Surely not, Jesus. But Jesus <coughs> spoke, dear friends, and guess what? It came to pass. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And at the end of the age? When's it coming, Lord? We want to go up. We're just on the down. And we want to get back up there, don't we? All the earth is groaning for it. The trees of the field will clap their hands. And we'll go out with joy. When? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Mm. Have we got lots of people wandering around saying, I'm the anointed one? Mm. Hmm? Oh, yes, we have. Turn on your... No, don't turn on your God's spot. <laughs> don't watch that rubbish. It's not fit for human consumption. <coughs> It'll pollute your brain. And it'll pollute you spiritually. I'm the anointed one and will mislead many. You'll be hearing of wars and rumours of wars, threats of wars. Have we got a lot of wars and threats of wars? See that you're not frightened. These things must take place. That's not yet the end. Nation will rise against nation. Have we got ethnic groups rising up against one another? Have we got ethnic conflicts everywhere? Oh, yes. Kingdom against kingdom. In various places, there'll be famines and earthquakes. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Volcanoes, earthquakes are on the increase. Massively. And it's going up exponentially. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. They'll deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. 
you'll be hated by all nations on account of my name. Is there persecution? Is it getting worse and worse? Is it because of the name of Jesus? Are Christians being killed? In large numbers around the world today. More than at any time for the last 2,000 years. Yes. At that time many will fall away. Is there regret falling away from the truth? An apostasy in the church. Will deliver up one another and hate one another and many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Are there lots of false prophets in the church today? False teachers. False apostles. Are there? And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all the nations. And then the end shall come. Earthquakes, wars, ethnic and racial conflict, famines and pestilence, persecution and anti-Semitism, lawlessness and rebellion on the increase. What else? Jesus said, as in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Homosexuality and perversion of every kind. What else? We looked at these over the last few weeks. Disturbances. Acatastasia. People without proper place. Refugees, we call them. There'd be millions of them. Have we got millions of refugees being shuffled out across the Middle East? Yes. <coughs> across Africa? Yes. Millions, dear friends, are displaced by what is happening in these days. What else? Perplexity. Perplexity. And dismay. Stress. Number one, <clears throat> for absences at work used to be the cold. Sorry, what we'll won't be in today, but a cold. What is it now? I can't come in, I'm stressed. Are we seeing these things? I mean, we, I'm not mocking, I'm not laughing at, at, at people's problems, dear friends. But is this what Jesus said would happen? Yes. It's exactly what the Word of God said would happen. Fear. Widespread fear. Around the world. And in the midst of this, Peter says, what kind of people are we to be? Because he said, I want to stir you up for these last days. You're going to face mocking. And you need to remember it is by the word of the Lord that the heavens and the earth were created. By God's word, everything is happening the way that he has said. What do we need to be stirred up to? I want to give you a few things this morning. Number one, prayer. Number one, prayer. We need to be a people who spend much time in prayer. For this coming year, dear friends, we need to be a house of prayer for all nations. We need to be getting alone before God, spending time with Him, and calling upon His wonderful name for those around us. We need to be a people of prayer. We need lives of prayer. We need communion with God. Turn to Luke chapter 21, page 1700. 
Luke and chapter 21. Verse 34 says, be on guard. Watch, watch yourself. Be on guard. That your hearts may not be weighted down. You know your heart can be weighted down. Mm. Never felt a heavy heart. We, we even use that term, don't we? Mm. So and so, they, they just seem to have such a heavy heart. Such a heavy heart. A heart that's weighted down, dear friends. Watch out that your heart is not weighted down. I hope your heart is not weighted down this morning. I hope your heart is joyful. The Bible says that our heart should be glad. That we should rejoice in the Lord always. I will be glad. I will be glad in the Lord. Why art thou downcast, O my soul? What, what are you so down about? Come on, heart. Stop being weighted down. Hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. And rejoice in Him, dear friends. We're the people who've got a hope. Who else has got a hope? Poor old Greta's got no hope. She's doomed. David Attenborough, he wants to get rid of six billion people to save poor old Mother Earth. He's not volunteering himself, I notice. I mean, he's had a good innings, hasn't he? Yes. But he, he's not offering himself upon the altar. He's just volunteering another six billion. Get rid of the riffraff, I suppose. We've got a hope, dear friends. It's going down, dear friends. And it's going down big time soon. But Jesus is coming back. The trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ shall be raised. We're going to gather together with him in the air. What a day that will be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day. Glorious day. Have you got that hope, dear friends, this morning? Because Jesus, the Bible says, you must be born again. And when you're born again, you're born again to a living hope by the Holy Spirit. You know that you're forgiven. You know that you belong to Him. You know that you've got a Savior that you can trust. And a glorious hope to look forward to. When you're born again by the Spirit of God. You need to be regenerated. Except a man be born again, he'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. We need to be in the kingdom. It's going up. We want to be up there. We want to be part of it. We need to pray. <clears throat> we didn't even get on to that, did we? Sorry. <laughs> Be on your guard. <laughs> that your hearts may not be weighted down. Well, I hope that was for somebody anyway, because we're talking about prayer, aren't we? <laughs> Let not your hearts be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. Don't let the worries get in there, dear friends. Don't let them get into your hearts. It'll go down. It'll be weighted down. Be anxious for nothing. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Just cast all your cares upon him. Lord, this thing's getting to me. Yeah, have it. <laughs> don't want it anymore in my don't want it in my heart. And that day come on you suddenly, like a trap. For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. They're earth dwellers, dear friends. They're even trying to save the earth. But we're citizens of heaven. 
Where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Where's your treasure? Where's your heart? We're citizens of heaven. Set your minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Don't set your thing of your, 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 your thoughts upon the things of the earth, dear friends. Let's be heavenly minded. Forget all this, oh, he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. Rubbish. I've never met anyone yet. Be heavenly minded. Set your mind on things above, the Bible says. But keep on the alert at all times, praying, in order that you may have strength to escape. Escape what? Just, just this downheartedness, dear friends. How do we keep ourselves out of that? How do we keep ourselves out of our hearts being weighted down? How do we stop our going down the slide, going down the tubes? We keep praying, dear friends. We keep fellowship with our blessed Saviour. We speak to Him often and all the way through the day. We walk before God, dear friends, and we trust in Him. Amen? We need to keep our prayer lives right this year. What else? 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Page 1962. Verse 5. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 says this, You, be sober in all things. Wake up, dear friends. Endure hardship and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Wake up. Peter's saying, I'm, I'm writing these things again to you. To stir you up by way of remembrance. I want to remind you of a few simple truths, because I want to wake you up. So that Chrissy keeps waking me up. Well, that's what we need to do. We need to stir one another up. Forsake not the assembling together of the brethren, and all the more as the day draws near. We need to gather together to encourage one another and to stir up one another to love and good deeds. Because it's going to get tough. <coughs> the world thinks it's like that and we know it's like that. And, and they're just going to mock us every time we open our mouths. And we need to encourage one another and stir one another up. Otherwise we're going to go to sleep. We're going to get weary. And the Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Don't get worn out in doing the things that you should be doing. What else? Ephesians chapter 5, dear friends. Ephesians and chapter 5. Page 1910. I'll read verse 14 because I like it. For this reason it says... Awake, sleeper! It's a common thing, isn't it? Wake up! Arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, redeeming the time. For the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't get drunk with wine. There it is again. Dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. What do we need to be? Filled with the Spirit, dear friends. We need to be careful with our time. 
we can waste time. We can waste time on computers, we can waste time on computer games for sure. We can waste time in front of the television, we can waste time in all kinds of ways. And time is something we've not got a right lot of. Started out with a lot, but we've not got much left. And we need to redeem the time. We need to make the most of our time here on earth, dear friends. We should be committed to living every day to please Jesus Christ. Every minute, every hour, what can I do for you? What would you have me do? But Lord, if I'm going to do it, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this coming year, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to seek the Lord. We need to call upon Him. That He baptizes us, that He fills us with the Holy Spirit. And empowers us to be the people He meant us to be. What else? Romans chapter 1. Only one or two more. Romans chapter 1. Page 1824, Romans chapter 1. And I'll read from verse 14. Paul says, I'm under obligation. Both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. That pretty much goes everybody, doesn't it? Who's he under obligation to? Everybody. Daft as a brush, or clever as anything. Under obligation. We're debtors. Thus, for my part, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith, dear friends. How will people know that we can only be saved by putting our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless they hear the gospel. They're not going to know. We need to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are witnesses. We need to preach repentance. That men everywhere need to repent because God has fixed a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness and he's furnished proof by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. And we should not be ashamed of the gospel. This year, dear friends, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be apologetic about sharing the gospel with people. It's the power of God. It's the only thing that can save them. Jesus can touch their hearts. He can change them. They can be regenerated. They can come out of darkness into light. They can go from death to life. From darkness to light. By the gospel. And we need to be stirred up, dear friends, with that attitude. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The world will try and make you ashamed of the gospel. The world will mock it and they'll mock you. But it is the power of God. And by the gospel, men learn that the only way to be righteous before God is to have your trust in Jesus Christ, in his finished work and in his person. And men need to know. And it is God's desire that all men come to a knowledge of the truth. Do you believe that? I hope so, because God says it. And he's not going to say, he's not going to do it by sending little voices from heaven, dear friends. He 
because he's got a body down here on earth. And you're part of it. So we need to be not ashamed of the gospel. Turn to Isaiah chapter 13. Just two more things before we close. Isaiah and chapter 13, page 1112. They see falsehood and lay in divination, who are saying the Lord declares when the Lord has not sent them, yet they hope for the fulfillment of their word. Did you not see a false vision and speak a lying divination? When you, oops, sorry, I thought that was rather strange. We read it from Ezekiel. <laughs> Isaiah. <laughs> Chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Verse 6. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. Do you believe that? I do. The day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. More and more rebellion against God, more and more sin, more and more lawlessness, and it will end in destruction from the Almighty. The wrath of God will be poured out upon the earth. Times of tribulation such as not been seen since the foundation of the world, Jesus said. Therefore all hands will fall limp, every man's heart will melt, they'll be terrified, Pains and anguish will take hold of them. They'll writhe like a woman in labor. They look at one another in astonishment. Their face is aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel, with fury and burning anger. To make the land a desolation, he'll exterminate its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not flash forth their light. The sun will be dark when it rises, the moon will not shed its light. Thus I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will also put an end to the arrogance of the proud, and abase the haughtiness of the ruthless. I'll make mortal man scarcer than pure gold, and mankind like the gold of Ophir. Therefore I shall make the heavens tremble. And the earth will be shaken from its place at the fury of the Lord of hosts in the day of his burning anger. We need to tremble, dear friends, because the day of the Lord is near. We should be fearful for those who dwell upon the earth for what is coming in the days ahead. But we shouldn't fear men. We should fear God. Jesus said, do not fear them that can kill the body, and after that there is no more that they can do. Fear him who can cast both soul and body into hell. Fear him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to hate iniquity. The fear of the Lord is clean. It is good. It is right. Dear friends, this is not just a, a, a nice fluffy worship, worshipful reverence. This is a genuine fear of the God who called all things into being, who controls everything by what he says, and whose wrath is going to be poured out in the days ahead. Dear friends, fear him. Tremble before him. Because he's a God to be feared. <clears throat> There's a thing that seems to be prevalent in the church these days, which is that somehow we shouldn't fear God. <coughs> Do 
but the Bible doesn't mean that. Dear friends, I fear God. He's a great and a terrible God. He's awesome. He's fearful. And that's what makes me so grateful for His amazing grace. So grateful for Calvary, which brings me in. One who was a far off brought near by the blood of Christ. Because God is an awesome God. He's a God to be feared. And so we don't take lightly the sacrifice that brings us to Him. One more scripture. Turn to Psalm chapter 2. Psalm, cha Psalm 2, page 878. A very relevant psalm this to the last days. Let's read the whole thing. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why? Why are the nations in an uproar? Do you think that's a reasonable summary of what's happening in the world today? Nations are in an uproar. The people's device in a vain thing. What are they devising? They're going to save poor old Mother Earth. They're going to dust her off and give her a new lease of life by burning less fossil fuels or something. <coughs> it's nonsense, dear friends. It's ridiculous <coughs> nonsense. They're devising a vain thing. The kings of the earth take their stand. They meet in the United Nations and they take counsel together against the Lord and against His Christ. They pass resolutions about the land of Israel which God has promised to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And the nations think that they can devise what happens next. Let's tear their feathers apart. Cast away their cords from us. And he who sits in the heavens laughs. God is laughing at the absurdity of the kings of the nations. How stupid! They are. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Ask of me. And I will surely give the nations as thine inheritance, the very ends of the earth as thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and shalt shatter them like earthenware. Who's coming to rule the nations? Who's coming to shatter them? When all the armies are gathered against Israel, all the nations gathered, all the armies of Antichrist gathered, he will come and he will slay them with his, the breath of his coming, dear friends. He'll wipe them all out, dear friends. They'll be trampled, trampled in the winepress of God's wrath. And he who is coming, King of kings and Lord of lords, will take his place, will sit on the throne of David <coughs> and the increase of his government, there will be no end, dear friends. Now therefore, O kings, show discernment. Please, government of Great Britain, wake up and understand Please, rulers, kings, authorities, 
wake up and understand it's not in our hands. It's not what we can do. It's what God has said. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Worship the Son, lest he become angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. Are you in him this morning? Are you taking refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you worshipping him? And are you going to do it every day of this coming year? I'm in Christ and I will worship him because he alone is worthy of my praise. Amen. May God stir us up, dear friends. May God stir us up. You may be mocked, but God has said. God bless his words. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your precious word. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, of all the times that we could have been born, of all the generations that we could have been born into, Lord, we're living in this day. What exciting times when God's word is being fulfilled before our very eyes. And we thank you. Lord, help us. Stir us up for this coming year. Lord, help us to be faithful in prayer. Help us to be faithful in witness. Lord, help us to seek you, to be filled with the Spirit of God, for we need you. Lord, help us to keep our hope firmly fixed on your return. Help us, Lord, because we need you. We ask in Jesus' name.